We are going to read a long scripture so that I can preach a short message. Let's look at <clears throat> sorry. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. If you are having your Bible, you can underline that name. He needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sika, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, that thus by the well, journeyed, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. So the one they were taking there was not living water. It was running water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock. So you can see the well fed everybody, even livestock. Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. That's why you're here, you woman. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And at this point, his disciples and came and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pots. Hallelujah. Uh, there, there is a well you drink from and you leave your water pot. The woman that left her water pot went her way into the city and said to the man, come see a man who told me. You see her clients. She said to the man, okay, we'll come there. Um, come see a man who told me all things that I, have, I ever did. Could they so they left the town and went to Jesus. In the meantime, the disciples were begging Jesus, Teacher, have something to eat. 
John for 30 minus 31 GNTD. My food, Jesus said to them, is to obey the will of the one who sent me and to finish the work he gave me to do. You have a saying for more months and then the harvest, but I tell you, take a good look at the fields. The crops are now ripe and ready to be harvested. John for 30 for minus 35 G and that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reap. I send you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, you have entered into their labor. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I've ever did. So when the Samaritan had come to him, they urged him to stay with them and he stayed there two days and many more believed because of his word. Then they say to the woman, now we believe not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the savior of the world. I, I will promise you we may not be able to cover the whole text, but I'll be able to cover what the Lord wants me to cover. The beginning of that scripture begins by criticizers. There was a criticism on the, on, the, on the ministry of Jesus because of increase. So the Pharisees were troubled that they were baptizing more men. And so they began to criticize him. And I discovered in life as a wisdom is that any man that bears results will attract two kind of people. The first person you're going to attract in your life is beneficiaries. Anyone that bears results. Any man that bears results will attract these two kind of people. The first one you'll attract is beneficiaries. And beneficiaries are the people that you are supposed to focus on. But the second group you are going to attract is criticizers. You better get ready. Every lifting comes with exposure. And every exposure comes with uh, ideas. And, 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 and people will begin to speak uh, uh, to you and even speak concerning what you are doing. People will have things to say. Never shift your focus from beneficiaries and begin to, to begin to fix the, 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 the criticizers. Because your agenda cannot be celebrated by everybody. So you need to know God never called you for everybody. But there are few people that are meant to benefit from what you are called to do. And please never change. And in my small journey in life, I have discovered that majority of the criticizers have these three things in common. This will help you. Because in the path of life, you will be criticized. Are we together? You will be misunderstood. People will look at you and they will see the results you have and you will be misunderstood. Never shift your focus to convince criticizers. Please invest on the beneficiaries. Many criticizers have these three things in common. Number one, they have the same potential and ability as you, but they don't have your results. Many people that criticize you, they have the same potential, they have the same degree, qualification. Some of them are even better than you, but they don't have the results you have. And sometimes we can never explain how we got where we got. That's why we always say hashtag Manzeni God, hashtag Ninema. And it looks like a cliche statement, but deep down, we, we have no formula. Am I talking to anyone? And sometimes it breaks you because it's not that you have done anything. It's just by the help of God. So there are people that have the same potential the same ability but they are troubled by your results they will criticize you and some of them will criticize you with a lot of passion 
because they they feel they ought to be where you are or even greater number two the second team of people that will criticize you it is men with unfulfilled dreams visions or assignment similar to yours men with unfulfilled dreams men with unfulfilled dreams visions or assignments that are similar to yours men with unfulfilled dreams visions and assignments that are similar to yours you are not the first man to dream whatever you dreamt let me give it, let me put it like this it is possible for a man to come and submit under life church but in that man there is a pastoral ministry so that person will be troubled by how we are doing things because every vision has a pattern must pass away like that must he do two services now you see he is complaining because in him he has the same dream so if if you are not careful you might end up fulfilling another person's dream at the expense of your dream that's why clarity is very key i remember there is a man in eldoret he has a very big hotel and a young man came and the young man began to advise him i said ah, ah, ah if i were you i would have built the sleeping area on that side then build the the, the the restaurant on this side then have the parking on this side and the man listened to the young man after the man finished he said Sasa kijana fanya hivi, yako. because this is my dream and i see you have a dream don't push your dream to my dream some of you need to tell some people very good ideas anza yako jenga yako hallelujah because if you if you are not clear in what you had you might end up everyone has an opinion and the more people you have around you the more opinions you will have so if there is no clarity you might end up doing and living another person's dream and this is the challenge every dream has a unique grace of fulfillment so you can't fulfill my dream because you don't have my grace neither can i fulfill your dream because i don't have your grace and that's why people have opinion about everything last man black that man has a dream of a red car so the red i know i'm speaking wisdom because we we sometimes and some people some of these people who have this unfulfilled dream some of them could be senior you remember the story of the young and the old prophet the young prophet has a virgin dream the old prophet has nothing and so the old prophet has to coerce the young prophet to fit in his schedule and the next thing the young prophet about his assignment i i i, I admire men but I don't copy because I know imitation is limitation. There is a grace. Even you, you can pioneer a new path. That which has never been done, it does not mean it cannot be done. Duplication is what kills the market. You saw they were complaining about the China, yeah? The China Square. Because whatever is in Yamakema, Kamukunji, is there, but at a cheaper price. If those people had something unique, they will not complain. But it is the same product. The argument is on price. So the moment you have what everyone else has, then there is no uniqueness. There must be something unique about what you're doing. And that is where now the grace and the anointing and the mantle of what you're doing begins to speak. All of us can preach from the same Bible, but everyone has a different grace and a different mantle. And number three, people that will criticize you because you are rising. Hallelujah. Yeah, you are becoming a big man in this city. You are rising. So be ready. One day this notes will help you. You will also meet men who aborted their season. Men that aborted their season. What does this mean? People that never stepped out in their season. According to Acts 13 and 36, 
you can only affect a generation never confuse relevance for impact i can be relevant in the coming generation but not impactful i can be known by the incoming generation but i'm not impactful every man the bible says david after he had served his own listen every man lives to serve his own so if you don't do anything now for god for your family for the kingdom another generation will come in and you'll be relevant someone asked me pass is squeeze you wimby come here the talent is in me the generation has shifted most of the people that used to listen to my songs are now fathers they are they are doing they are serious in life and it is possible to be caught up in the incoming generation sasa mimi na miaka yangu mnakuta nimevaa short nimechora matatu na jaribu ku kubamba generation yenye pastor Jimmy anapreachia have you ever seen people and you look at them and you feel they are lost you feel there was a time this was relevant this dress code there was a time it was okay now kubali kuzeka another generation is coming bona swe sana we must we and, and, and it is so sad when you feel in the season of your generation at the right now you are 35 years old you are on tiktok you look like a clown <laughs> bring tiktok challenge the generation yet we go facebook but yele generation tiktok you are seeing elder kanyinge with his family being like this. ah you look at that he will get likes not because he's relevant elder elder <laughs> not because he's relevant why because the the young people are looking at him and now he looks like a joke am i speaking to anyone yes <laughs> so when a man aborts his season when a man aborts his season and he feels to be impactful in his season let me give a good example if we don't preach to the high schoolers now we don't have another after around 15 years we may not be very impactful we can still open the bible and preach but not as impactful as now now if i wake up from my slumber after 15 years it means there was a genuine vision of doing high school mission but the season has elapsed so what i will do any young man that rises in that time to preach in high schools i'll criticize because he's doing that which I was meant to do but because I aborted my vision and my season so anyone that rises I began to criticize this is how you find old men ministers criticizing young ministers and they are trying to put them in their scale saying what is he teaching what is he preaching these young men need to know the gospel and they fail to understand when they were the age of that young man possibly they were dating instead of preaching that man has begun well he may not know everything but he has begun you need to hold his hand and mentor him yeah you, i can't compare a man that is now 20 years old when he preaches i know there are things i know because of dwelling in the word for the years i have dwelt there are things i know and i can't compare myself with my spiritual father because he has stayed for a while with this word and that's why now we have a culture where Many young people are not rising because men that are aborted their season are the ones on the gates criticizing a generation and setting standards that they never kept in that age. Sometimes I always say, even your own children, some of the rules you set, can you follow them? Now you get out of being the father and become the child and see if you can follow those rules. Seller. There's a time we asked our principal in high school, if you are a student, will you manage? These things you are telling us, he smiled. Then he said, can you get out of my sight? Because he also knew whatever he was saying was so high. So we begin to see that this man will come your way. Please don't focus on them. You do what the Lord has called you. And this is the 
best answer to wisdom i'm beginning with sharing wisdom before we go to doctrine the first thing they say is silence can never be misquoted silence can never be misquoted not everyone in your circle deserves an answer and not every word criticism deserves your address silence can never be misquoted number two the best answer you can give to people that don't believe in you is results they can argue with your method but they can never argue with the results nicodemus came and said rabbi we know that no man can do what you do unless god is with him that's a pharisee acknowledging the results upon jesus could only be because he was with god ah there are many methods but there are results that men cannot argue with channel your energy to the right direction and please don't be delayed now the only way to understand the scripture so there was a debate on baptism many were coming to the ministry of jesus and the disciples were the ones baptizing them not even jesus and 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 and, and you know they were troubled but that never troubled jesus in fact after that trouble of many coming to him he decided now to do something that has never been done in israel he, he now decided to go where men don't go the bible says that he wanted to go to judea he was coming from he left judea and departed again to galilee now now yes it looks like a statement but the bible says but he had to pass through samaria you can't ignore that but why is john so much concerned about the navigation he would have told us he wanted to move from judea to galilee then he went but the bible says but but he needed to go he needed he needed meaning that there was something in samaria that needed to happen that's why the navigation of jesus must be captured in this scripture but you see you can't understand this scripture unless history is now brought to you have you ever realized any time the bible talks of a samaritan they must tell you he was a samaritan there, there is an emphasis on samaritans jesus gives a parable and says one day there was a man he was beaten by thieves and a levite came and passed him a priest came and passed him he said but a good samaritan and who was his audience the jews he was trying to tell them something about the samaritans and i was meditating on that scripture and i discovered the power of ministry to one man you see the levite was going to serve in the temple multitude the priest was going to serve in the temple multitude but they ignored the one man but a samaritan ministered to that one man i told my wife i am tired of just serving multitude i want also to minister to the one man Hi. some of those young men are there at the house elves in your house the one man in need that is the one man yes i know you serve multitudes you cook tea but the lord has brought a house help who does not have food and does not have school fees you are now at the masses of that person yes i know you pay them i know it's your money but please change the roles and ask yourself in this nation the the next thing after house help the only the other thing that people can do possibly is prostitution many don't go to that work because they want that's the fact it's life that has burdened them and then the lord brings that person wounded broken to your hands and then you are busy with public ministry and you have abandoned personal ministry you can fill the love basket with flour but that woman every day she goes home she has children you have never given her flour and God is looking and saying, and do you know the Samaritans were not born again? 
the Levite, they were known. Their garments spoke of their faith. The priest, their garments spoke of their faith. The Samaritans who look, they were considered as heathens to a point that if a man wanted to insult you, he would have called you a Samaritan. Look at John 8.48. It was not a very good name. I know I'm speaking to real men. I, 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 when I read that scripture, I began to meditate on the power of ministering to one man that God has brought to my life. Then Jesus answered and said to him, do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Okay, let me give this example. It's not a very good example. Have you ever heard people say, Missy Masai? If you're a Masai, we are not insulting you. But I'm just using an example in Kenya that we all know. And, it, and I, I hate it because they tried to use it in terms of Kamo Shiki Kitu. Now, example, me fika home. So if a man wanted to insult you, he'll tell you, Samaritan, where, where? Because <laughs> it was not a very good name. Is someone getting me? May the Lord help us to understand the ministry of one man. Because Jesus is also concerned. I refuse to stand before thousands, yet I'm ignoring that one that the Lord has brought to me so that I can minister to them. So the Bible talks about the good Samaritan. In the book of Luke also, I believe it's chapter, is it 17 or yes, chapter 17. We talk about the 10 lepers. And then the Bible says, and one came to give thanks and he was a Samaritan. So there is an emphasis because of who he was a Samaritan. And then now we come to this woman. And this woman we are told a Samaritan woman. That even the disciples saw Jesus talking to him. And they said nothing. Verbally. But they must have said something. Yeah, internally. They left him with that woman alone. No, they left him alone. Then they found him with a woman. A Samaritan. Hey. And her dealings were not very okay. You know, a man made a joke and said, when you read your Bible and quote it, you need to quote it well. Because in the book of 1 John 4.18, maybe you can read 1 John 4.18. It says a, a man was sending scripture to his girlfriend. And he wanted to send 1 John 4.18. This is 1 John. 1 John 4.18. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love. Cast out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. This is what he wanted to send. But he sent John 4.18. It's good to confirm scripture before you send. Now it says, for you have heard. And the one whom you now have. It's not your husband. In that you spoke truly. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, confirm scriptures. Even to Aliachua. Okay, let's go back to the word. Let's go back to the word. Oh, Jesus. So I'm trying to lay a foundation to understand that Samaritans, Samaritans, Samaritans were, were a special group of people. And there was historical enmity between the Jews and the Samaritans. When you understand this enmity, John 4 will come alive. Now, now this one is biblical history. For those who read the Bible, they will understand it. David hands over power to Solomon. Solomon hands over power to Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the son. And he's given counsel by the wrong men. Young people advised Rehoboam. Because the stability of kingdoms is dictated by the quality of counsel. The people that advise you dictate how far and how stable you can go. And sometimes wisdom dictates you cannot have counsel from people of your age. You need men that have gone through stuff so that they can share their failures and their success. 
one man wrote and said the secret of the great men are in their autobiography the secret of greatness there is no class that teaches greatness anytime you grab the autobiography of a person like Mandela you will see the secrets of leadership in his story and sometimes even failures become platforms of lectures hallelujah and so at this time Rehoboam attracts a council of young men and, and, and Solomon was advised by old men David his father was advised by a man called Ahithophel the Bible says the counsel of Ahithophel was like the counsel of God that's how wise the man was when Ahithophel partnered with Absalom David left the palace he knew it is over because he knew if this man advises Absalom my kingdom will collapse because I am whom I am because of the counsel of this man that his counsel was put in the level of God the wisdom in that man governments stand because of people that surround the king you can have a king that fears God but the, those that counsel him are the wrong people and that's how Rehoboam messed up and a prophet was sent and he was told the kingdom is divided and another man was raised by the name of Jeroboam and Jeroboam managed the ten tribes of Israel Rehoboam managed the two tribes of Judah and Benjamin and the reason why Judah had to be preserved is because there was a covenant of the Messiah upon Judah so the ten were under Jeroboam and the two were under Rehoboam are we together up to there now Jeroboam who had the ten tribes was afraid that when the ten tribes go to worship in Jerusalem they will be won back by Rehoboam so he set higher places in his territory and those higher places became a place of worship he introduced idol worship trying to sustain his government and that division of Israel opened a door later because both the north and the south the kingdom of Jeroboam and the kingdom of Rehoboam both of them backslid and they stopped serving the living God the Lord also divided their judgment follow King this is history biblical now the kingdom under Jeroboam the ten tribes of Israel they were captured and they were put under the Assyrian leadership okay the, the two tribes Judah and Benjamin were put under Babylon that's how we get the story of Daniel after Babylon took over they took over the two tribes this vision was seen by Jeremiah the tilting pot from the north was the judgment that was coming through the Assyrian so the Assyrians took the Israelites out of their land and they took them as captives and Samaria was a capital city of the Assyrians are you ready to read some scriptures oh today is history class but this is the only way you can understand look at first king 16 24 a, a Jewish king bought the areas of Samaria and and first king 16 24 now when 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 the Jews were taken out first Kings 16 24 and he bought the hill of Samaria from Shemar for two talents of silver now this is King King Omri I will not go to details but this is King Omri so he bought Samaria and the Jews lived there serving the true living God but after abandoning the true living God they were taken by the Assyrians and the Assyrians came and made Samaria their capital city and headquarters now when the men were taken out there are some few people that were left in the Assyrian in the in Samaria some farmers some old people and some sickly people and those people intermarried with the Assyrians now there was an intermarriage between the Jews and the Assyrians now remember all of them were under pagan worship and because of that the Lord released 
judgment and the lions came in the town to devour them look at second kings 17 25 to 33 second kings 17 25 to 33 oh this sounds like a class but it is a class this is now discipleship and it was so at the beginning of their dwelling there that they did not fear the lord therefore the lord sent lions among them which killed some of them so they spoke to the king of assyria saying the nation whom you have removed and placed in the cities of samaria do not know the rituals of the god of the land therefore he has sent lions among them and indeed they are killing them because they do not know the ritual of the god of the land so what did the king do then the, then the king of assyria commanded saying send there one of the priests whom you brought from there let him go and dwell there and let him teach them the rituals of the god of the land are we together then one of the priests whom they had carried away from samaria came and dwelt in bethel and taught them how they should fear the lord however every nation continued to make gods of his own and put them in the shrines of the high places which the samaritans had made every nation in the cities where they dwelt now the samaritans was a breed of jews and the assyrians so when they intermarried they never produced jews they now produce men that were named after the city the samaritans are we together are we together yes now these samaritans they were doctrinated by a jewish priest a priest was sent after lions were released kill them a priest was sent to teach them the ways of the lord and the only existing doctrine were the books of moses the torah genesis leviticus deuteronomy numbers and exodus and any time you are teaching men the ways of the Lord, you had to major on these books. Deuteronomy, Numbers, and Leviticus. So they were taught in the laws of your way. So the Samaritans, that's how they were conceived. And that's how their doctrine was conceived. Are we together? Are we together? Now, after the Jews left Babylon, and they came in the season of Ezra. When they came back to their land, they found the Samaritans. They were custodians of the law. But the Jews never considered them as Jews. And when the Jews were building the temple, the Samaritans wanted to help, but they denied them. Ezra 4 chapter 2. They denied them and enmity began. Because the Samaritans considered themselves as Jews. But the Jews considered them as non-Jews. And never honored them. They came to Zerubbabel and head of the father's house and said to them, Let us build with you. Okay, begin from one so that you understand. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the descendants of the captivity were building the temple of the Lord, God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel and the head of the father's house and said to them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do. And we have sacrificed to him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assyria, who brought us here. Are you seeing it? Yes. But Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the heads of the father's house of Israel said to them, you may do nothing with us to build a house for our God, but we alone will build to the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded. The enmity began there. They were denied the opportunity. They said, we seek your God. We have been sacrificing in this land. Now, these are men coming from judgment. They can't joke with their way. Because Babylon was a form of judgment. So they are back and they are like, guys, we can't compromise. We know what it means to compromise. We have just served 70 years in Babylon. They said, guys, stay away from us. We will not build. Look at Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter number four also. And maybe go for Ezra 10, go to Ezra 4.10. The rest of the nation whom the creator and the noble or snapper took captive and settled in the cities of samaria and the remainder beyond the river and so forth so they denied them look at nehemiah 4 2 4 1 and 2. 
Nehemiah 4, 1 and 2. This is how you grow, man. Hallelujah. I want you guys to know your Bible well. So the day you read Samaritan, this history will come up. You'll know why it's a Samaritan. But it also happened when San Palat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren, the, the army of Samaria, and said, his brethren. So San Balat was a Samaritan. So any development in Israel, where they were not involved, they opposed. And this San Balat, the daughter or the son, I think, was married to a, 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 a family of a priest. Uh, 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 and said what are these people Jews doing will they forty, fortify themselves will they offer sacrifices will they complete it in a day will they revive so we see San Balak he was a Samaritan are we together so we can see the enmity is now continuing because uh, Nehemiah comes later after the foundations of the temple rebuild Nehemiah comes later so we begin to see the enmity continues and so what the Samaritans did they now adopted the five books of Moses and they said this is our book they also rejected any Jewish writing the prophets and the historical books they rejected them so they built their doctrine on the first five books they also established a place of worship in a mountain called Gezerim and the Jews used to worship in Jerusalem maybe you can write this down characteristics of Samaritan worship characteristics of Samaritan worship characteristics number one they worshipped at Mount Gerizim I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. They worshipped at Mount Gerizim. And in their worship, they claimed that is where Moses wanted Israel to worship, not Jerusalem. Number two, they had a unique version of the Torah or the Pentateuch. They had a unique version of the five books of Moses. And they said that was the original copy. Whatever Israel was using was fake. So they said they were the custodians of the original laws. So number one, they worshipped at Mount Gerizim. Number two, they had their own unique version of the Pentateuch or the Torah or the books of Moses. They had their own version. Number three, they rejected the writings of the prophets and Jewish tradition. They rejected the writings of the prophets. They rejected the writings of the prophets and Jewish tradition. They never, in fact, they always believed Samuel was a sorcerer. In their teachings, they believe all the prophets were trying to set a narrative to show that the Jews were right, but they are all liars. That's the doctrine. They rejected the writings of the prophets and and Jewish tradition number four they believed they believed they were the true Israel descendants the others were in both and now the Jews believed they were also fake now you can see the conflict they believed we are the real Jews you guys, the others are fake. They believed they were the true descendants of Israel. And number five, they believed they were custodians of the true religion. They were custodians of the true religion, the doctrine, the teachings, mosaiclo, they were custodians. And that enmity, so number one, we have said, they worshiped that mount, Gerizim, Israel worshipped at Jerusalem. Number two, they had a unique version of the Torah. Okay? Whatever we read is not what they read. Theirs has some few other things. 
Number three, they rejected the writing of the prophets and Jewish tradition. So they end at the Torah. They also believe they were the true descendants of Israel. All the other Jews are fake. So they don't believe in Isaiah. They don't believe in that. But you see the advantage in the Torah. There was prophecy of the Messiah. And number five, believe they were custodians of the true religion. They believe they were custodians of the true religion. Now, that enmity between the Jews and the Samaritans escalated up to the days of Jesus. To a point, Galilee, I think Galilee was to the north and Judea to the south. So, anyone that wanted to move from Galilee to Judea or Judea to Galilee, you could not pass through Samaria. Let me give a good example. You want to go to Ruaka, but you cannot pass through St. Paul's because Samaritans live there. So you rather take Wayakiwe. Then you go so that you can come out of Ruaka. So there is no Jew that passed in Samaria. No Jew. That's why I began by saying they challenged the results of Jesus. Now he was about even to fish what they were not fishing. And so by the, that's what the Bible says. Now are you understanding the first verse? <gasps> we are on verse 1. Is it verse 2? Verse 3 and 4. That Jesus wanted to go to Galilee from Judea. But now we are dealing with but. That whole history is to tell you why why that path is there but he had to go through Samaria now that begins to tell me the first thing nothing can hinder the agenda of Jesus nothing there was a historical battle there was religious battle there was social battle there was political battle but there was an assignment of heaven when I read this scripture I said even these people who are calling themselves the queer community we will enter Samaria yes because they need the gospel hallelujah we let, let the let the government do their work we will look for them we will pray for them and tell them you don't need counseling you need the Holy Ghost your identity is in Christ lift up your hands you are not a woman you're a man in the name of Jesus whatever was taken you are not a man you are a woman in the name of Jesus we must enter our Samaria because there are many cultural barriers there are many political barriers Jesus was risking because every Jew avoided Samaria so that they can look like they are real Jews but whatever they avoided is what he went for because all this needed the gospel that's why he gives a parable because all of them are children of Adam and he enters Samaria irrespective of the cultural deviation and violence when I looked at this scripture it began to change my mind about preaching I said we must enter where men are not entering how will they know if they don't hear how will they hear if we don't preach we must enter the church is becoming a safe area we just want holier than thou rashias than thou good-looking intercessor us. listen a time is coming where we will see men with their tattoos and we'll know this one is a Samaritan this one was not one of us but now by faith they're in the household of faith and so Jesus goes he goes to Samaria and, and, and he enters irrespective of the historical barrier he, he must enter and correct an ancient issue of worship and we need to get this very clearly he never went to the city he went to the well now prophecy will begin to unveil here because wells quench thirst there are two thirsts that a man can have you can have natural thirst and you can have spiritual thirst you can never feed your spiritual thirst with natural elements the other day I was looking and the Lord told me have you ever realized when celebrities or rich people are attacked the next thing they begin to say, where are pesa? Because there is a part of man that can use materialism for defense. There is a part of man that can use material things to fulfill a spiritual task. 
please follow keenly because the bible says the, 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 this jesus never he knew the city would have gone they will not have done anything but he went to a well that fed the city because the issue of samaria was genuine worship they thought they were right but they were not right meaning that there was a genuine task but the wrong content there was a because their religion was like the well of jacob it was a religion pioneered by men not jehovah when they intermarried and adopted the torah it was not the will of god they stay in the torah their religion was not bad by the spirit their religion was like the jacob well it was dug by a man and that man handed over to joseph and that well fed men and animals it could only deal with the thirst of men but they needed another water that could deal with the spiritual thirst that is why it is a contention of wells. The well of the living water sat on the well of Jacob so that the real well can feed Samaria. There are wells that are dug by men. They can never meet your needs. Hallelujah. Oh, that's why I began by saying this is not Pastor T's church. This is the well of Jehovah. This is the, let him dig this well. Let him dig this well. May you feed from the living waters. He had to contend with the well that gave life to men. He said there is another well. You drink of it, you can't come back with the pot here. That is the well, our generation. People have exalted materialistic gospel. Even animals are drinking from that well. It is a well for all spirits. But there is another well. It is a personal well. Jesus never introduced himself to a community. He introduced himself to an individual. Because the revelation of Jesus is personal. The walk and encounters are personal. He sat on that well. It was a challenge to that well. This woman was not talking to a man. He was talking to a well. Hi. And you can see the Bible says at the sixth hour. Six is the number of man. Man was created on the sixth day. That is why there will be a number given to man. It is called 666. It is a perfection of humanism. Whatever we call the mark of the beast, it may not be necessarily something put on your forehead or on your hand. The, the tools of your transaction as a man is your hand and your head. It is, it is doctrination of humanism. To a point now, people begin to believe I can be my own boss. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. You can't be your own boss. A man planted, a man harvested, and he said, now I can enjoy. The owner of that life came for it that night. He said, you are a foolish man. I am coming for you. We are raising a generation that they are perfecting humanism. I don't need to go to church. I can sit at home. I can commune with God. Do not forsake the gathering of believers. I was happy when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. This online is perfecting humanism, and that is the first initiation of 666 you can do all you want to do you can be anything i want to tell you you cannot be anything you can only be what god ordained you to be before i formed you jeremiah i knew thee ordained you i have engraved your name on the palm of my hand i know the number of hair that is upon you you are the apple of my eye that is the god we serve oh self-made god great of all times Humanism is true and, and you see that humanism doctrine has now entered the church because we teach motivational humanism and then some little bit of Jesus you know it doesn't matter where you're born hallelujah it doesn't matter what you're going through turn to that neighbor tell that neighbor girl you're beautiful oh Jesus <laughs> humanism <laughs> And the one you are giving a high five is a daughter of Jezebel. Humanism. No, no, no. <laughs> the word must enter and conform you to the image of Christ. Whereby I decrease that he may increase. It is not me who lives, but Christ lives in me. It is no longer about me. It's about him. Let him be lifted. If they see me, I have failed. If they see you, Jesus, I have done it. And that humanism is so much, it's in our preaching. After materialistic gospel, now we need to empower men. 
Listen, there is an empowerment of the Holy Ghost. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It is not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Oh, is the Rubabel, what is this great mountain? Speak to it now. It shall be lifted, and you shall bless the capstone with a shout, not of might, of grace, grace, divine ability that gives you the power to have divine results. That now is spiritualism. Hey. So Jesus comes at the sick, the hour of man, when the needs of man, the appetites of man are the peak. And the woman goes with her pots at the well, Jacob's well. I was reading this scripture, the Lord was telling me, please sir, don't turn life church to be a Mr. T well. Yes, please let it be. Let them meet Jesus. Yeah, we can turn this to be a well. And you come and ask, are you greater than Pastor T? Listen, there is one that is greater. Leo Pasia preached, see the church. Oh, please, don't make me a well. You'll kill me early. Let Jesus be the well. Even a child can stand here, recite a word, memory verse. And that was someone's word. And their Sunday settled. One scripture. It's not about who opens the mouth. It's about which vessel the Lord has prepared for that meeting. And this woman, of course, we know her trade. She was a prostitute. So she could not go at the time when the population was going to the wall because of her trade. That is why there was no one at the well. Many people will go possibly uh, at around three or meet, but this woman went at a time when the populace could not go because of her trade. And this woman was a picture of the community of the Samaritans. She was a prostitute and Samaritan was prostituting. Who is your husband? Even the one you have, the fifth one, is not yours. Because the Torah has five books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. It has Deuteronomy and Numbers. Even the five books cannot deliver you. You need one that can deliver you. You have been prostituting with the Torah. But now, let me introduce you to the living water. I am the well of the living waters. There is a hunger in you that is divine. It cannot be met by this well. If you drink of me, you are thirsty is going to be quenched and now the well began to introduce itself he said you have taken of this well many years it has never sorted your thirst it's another time to look for the real well let me tell you the truth money is good cars are good but there is a part in man that can never be satisfied you can be a ceo but empty you can be a billionaire but empty you can have all but empty and you may not have all these things but there is something flowing in you the life of the father I came to tell you you are not disadvantaged because you came by a motorcycle you are not disadvantaged because you are walking you have an advantage if you know the streams of the living water that's where it all begins there is a lot of materialistic speaking pastor mina taka mungu wa komboe nyotayangu that's not our language no out of my belly shall flow why will it flow i am connected to the tank jesus is the source of the living waters all i need to do is connect is to pipe my channels to the tank anytime i feel like my energies are going low i just pray in the holy ghost and then the waters are released and i'm rejuvenated you need to get the mystery of water as the deer panted for the waters so my soul passes for you oh lord you think it's a hymn no it's not a hymn why the deer panted there is a desire because there is a thirst that the waters can quench but in ancient israel water was rare because israel was in a desert so any time a deer saw a pool of water it was a mystery number one the water quenched the thirst Number two, as the deer jumped, it refreshed the deer. Number three, it made the deer lose its scent. Sometimes you walk and you have some scent you're smelling. Have you ever seen these movies, police movies, that a man runs away from jail and they take his shirt and they put it on a sniffer dog and then the dog now does not need anything. It has a scent. It begins to pursue. Then the man runs away from jail. He jumps in water and the dog comes and gets confused and go back because when the man jumped in water he lost his scent so the, the the dog cannot pursue him any longer animals in the jungle they hunt by scent so a lion can stay and sense their 
that he has grazing because it has captured the scent. So when the deer jumps in water, there is safety. When we jump in this water of the world, we are cleansed of the scent and the devil cannot touch us. When we drown in this water, we begin to lose whatever attacks the enemy around our lives. And this water quenches and refreshes us. I don't know about you, but there are times I always feel discouraged and one scripture is enough to jumpstart my spirit. Nothing has changed around, but something has entered. The waters, the living waters have revived my spirit. He said, listen woman, you have been drinking from the well of Jacob. There is another well. There is another well. You can see the conversation. It began, you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. Then she went and said, sir, 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 I perceive you're a prophet. By the time the conversation was ending, he, she asked, are you the Messiah? Because as you interact with Jesus, you might think he's a Jew. As you continue interacting, your statement changes and says, sir, because now there is a rank you have understood about him. By the time the conversation is ending, you went as a prostitute, but you go back as an evangelist. The Bible says she abandoned her pots. Today somebody is going to abandon the pots. I don't know where you have been drinking, but there is another water that can satisfy your life. You don't need that alcohol. You don't need that relationship. You don't need someone to text you the whole night to look like they are farming you. There is something in your spirit that can only be addressed by the spirit of the father he said i am the well of the living waters i don't know where you have been watching money may not satisfy there is a hunger in man i say there is a hunger in man that only god can satisfy there are people who rely on vindication that a man must approve your life listen you are beautiful drink from the water you don't need an sms to make you feel affirmed and vindicated you don't need the voice of a man you need the voice of of Jesus. The Bible says after this encounter, she met the men and told them she has met a man, Kapasata. She met the men. Those men could not satisfy her needs, but she met a man. You are moving from a realm of meeting men to meeting a man. One that can change your life and change your narrative. He said, woman, it has been about the mountain, Gesserim and Jerusalem, but it is no longer about the mountain you can go to life church and encounter me you can go to another church and encounter me it is not about the mountain it is about men moving from the flesh because I God am a spirit the hour cometh woman you can go to life church and perish if you are not in the spirit the hour cometh and now is the hour the hour cometh and now 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 that name now is an eternal statement now we never change it is now even now it will be now even tomorrow he was she was being told you must enter an eternal dimension worship is not wrapped up in time worship is men who live in time meeting a God that lives out of time you can't deal with me in your current parameters you can't deal with me with your current battles I am the ancient of days yes today matters may not be working but unless you get out of time where matters are not working and enter into eternity where matters are forever working you can never worship me he said listen daughter it is not about the mountain I came to tell you it's not about the name of the church it's about the status of your spirit if you came here still thinking about home we will worship and you'll go back home empty if you came here thinking about pills you will worship and go empty he said that hour cometh and now is the hour we are true 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 worshipers meaning that you can have a church where they are worshiping but they are false worshipers they are giving him lip service they are just doing it because it's a routine we must get out of the routine I refuse to sing because it's a song I refuse to pray because it's a prayer I refuse to gather because it's on Sunday I must get out of routine and become a true worshiper and he said the hour coming the true worshippers will worship the Father, the Father, and the Father is a language of relationship. Them that believed, He gave them the power, and they became the sons of God. Them that believed, He gave them the power, and He says they shall worship. Can you see the word there? In what? In what? The word spirit here is small s. It is not capital S. 
you can never meet God in flesh no encounter of Zion ever happened in the flesh that is why the devil will torment your mind the devil will torment your flesh but the devil can never touch your spirit and your change is connected to the alertness of your spirit let me tell you why people come to church and they don't get any miracle because they came body and soul the spirit is so defeated and God can never meet you in the flesh if you must be in the spirit I John was in the valley of Patmos in the day of the Lord I was in the spirit I was in the spirit and then the Lord begins to say that time is coming that they must worship me in truth truth revelation of who I am you can't take the word out of worship worship here is not a song a song is what drives you to intimacy a song is a car that carries you to meeting that is not worship when that car takes you there now you begin to commune that's why the Bible says them that know their God they shall do exploits the same scripture declares Adam knew Eve and begot Isaiah and begot and begot and begot Abel Adam knew Eve Adam knew them that know that name is intimacy how what is worship is when a man can come put out his failure put out his struggles could put out because there can never be intimacy if you are afraid of revealing your nakedness it can never happen intimacy is a language of coming clean hypocrisy is killing the church people are lifting their hands because people are lifting their hands they are still bitter and the Lord is saying that is still in the flesh that is still in the soul the hour come the woman now that worshippers must he says we will worship the father in spirit and truth for the father that name seeking means he's searching they are rare they are rare pastor there are many who gather on Sunday and they sing songs but they are not worshipping because they are still jealousy they are still malicious they are still bitter they are still gossiping so the Lord is looking because he's the searcher of the hearts of men when he finds a genuine worshiper encounters are possible when he finds one that has surrendered the flesh every battle in your life is in the flesh and the mind every battle house is locked what is that house for to house the body pastor I have no salary why I cannot afford food and clothes pastor I'm going through a hard time. Define that hard time in a spiritual context. It has nothing to do with the spirit. And the devil will always parade struggles in the flesh. That's why the first level of conquering is to conquer the desires of the flesh. At that level, at that level, the devil that your house is locked, you are on the cross like Jesus, but you are crying Eloi, Eloi, that is worship. That is worship. You are not saying, God, where are you? Men are stoning you like Stephen. And you are saying, I see him seated. I see him seated. Not with my eyes. My eyes are seeing my haters. But the eyes of the spirit are seeing him eternally enthroned. Because the fact that I'm being stoned, it does not change who he is. It comes from a depth of revelation. In truth, the truth of who he is will never make you complain. That's why you can still worship him in the storm. You can still praise him in sacrifice circumstances and so the devil has lifted the appetite of the church for material things so that when men come to meet him they meet from a demand level but they don't meet him from an encounter level demands are not what made us to get born again we are not here for school fees we are here for something greater we are not here for house rent we are here for something greater we are not here for material things we are here for encounters they are encounters that will change your life kapaya let they are encounters that will never make school fees become a prayer item the Bible says and Moses saw the fire after encountering the fire the Bible says he turned he turned first to look at the fire then he turned there are encounters that turn your life permanently that out of the depths of your life you can enter where job entered he said naked I came naked I shall return the devil has fought me in the flesh he has fought me materially but he has not touched my spirit I will worship the Lord even in that level still afflicted with wounds he still lifts his eyes and say my redeemer liveth he has not changed because they are afflictions men are 
surrounding him. They want to tell him the Lord has abandoned him, but he still tells them, my redeemer, my redeemer liveth. Church, there is a level we must enter. Is someone getting me? I know God cares. That's why he says, they will worship the father. If you have a father, he will take care of you. The reason why Israel were delivered is for worship. He said, Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, let my children go that they may worship me in the wilderness. He invested more than 10 signs and wonders to deliver people for worship. They were not coming out of Egypt to get cold. They were coming. God had missed that worship. He said, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh said, let the men go. He said, no, they will go with their animals. Go with their children. Go with everything. Because when we worship, there is a transaction in the spirit. But also, there is a transfer on the altar. He might demand my cows, it is still worship. He might demand my money, it is still worship. He said, tell them to carry everything. They are wealth, they are possession. Because when they encounter me, they can surrender all because of me. A man discovered a field that had a gem. He sold the field for the gem. What does that tell you? Value, value. There is a value that is attached to worship. It's not just lifting hands, no. No, that, that is, that everyone can do that. Even men that don't have faith. That is why he's saying he's seeking, he's seeking. He's seeking for them, for them. They are rare. People came from a place of demand. Father, if you do this, I'll do this. Father, if you give me, I'll give you. He's saying, those are not my sons. Those are businessmen in church. My sons don't place demands. They worship me for who I am. My sons come in the spirit. They don't look at their battles. They look at me. My sons can lose their head and say, and say like Paul, I have run the race. I have kept the faith. And now I am ready to be poured as a living sacrifice. The many complaints, and please church, don't get me wrong. Many complaints among the believers is not in the patterns of the things of God is in the patterns of their material appetite many many that's why he told them lift up your eyes look the fields the fields are white because many their eyes are not on what he desires their eyes are on what they desire the father is seeking look at 24 our time is up God is uh huh It's not a request, it's a demand. Do you want to worship him? Must. Don't bring flesh baggage. Pastor, I'm sick. That's the flesh. Pastor, I'm depressed. That's the soul. God is not meeting you at a soul level. He's meeting you at a spirit level. And he says, those who worship, I never wrote the Bible. I know what it says. Must. That's why sometimes we come and pray in tongues. Some of us are praying in tongues and we don't have even offering. But we know there is a demand of communion. That demand is that I must be in the spirit. I must, not should, must. And the truth in me will dictate the depth of my worship. We'll look at this matter in detail. Are we together? So that we can move. We will pray for needs is a part of what we do. But that's not our emphasis. There is a place you encounter God and needs are suspended. Boss, there are dealings of Zion. That will make you even feel like you want to live in church. And at that level, the devil will not know what to parade. They close your house. You go to the mountain seven days of fasting. Ah. Now the devil na juliza. Uyu ni tamfanya nini? Aje kutajo yu mungu. And in that seven days, another path opens. But you didn't go there for a path. You went there just to be with him even be real when this true gospel is preached depression will end majority of the things depressing men is comparison majority of us we have the necessities of life but we lack the luxuries of life yeah, we have food we have bed we have a house and somehow God has kept us somehow we can't explain the, the, the problem of anxiety is when we think of tomorrow. We can't fix tomorrow. You are not even guaranteed of tomorrow. Jesus said, be anxious of nothing. But there is too much pressure even in church to make it. Hey. You can pack 
Jacob the eight outside there, but you are still thirsty. And by the way, I discovered the higher you rise in God is like the more the demand for him comes. I, I have traveled with some senior men and most of them listen to worship and preachings in their cars. It's small men who buy cars and begin to play bongo music with windows drop down. There is a level you enter and you know these things I have can never meet this demand. Go to heaven gate. You will find Prados, Range Rovers, 2019, 2020 packed. People drinking from the real well. Drinking from the real well. They are not there because they have no money. They are there because they know there is another thirst. Hi. There is another thirst. If I don't sustain this hunger, these material things will kill me. The bank will come with their demands. I will die. But as long as the thirst is there, I take every day at a time. May that thirst be released of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare every man may dwell. Let it dry. Let the wells of the living waters, let them begin to flow. Shabela Kadaya. Make that pray in one minute. Our time is well spent. Laporia and Peles Zakataya, connect yourself with the living waters. Out of my belly shall flow the streams of water. Something will begin to flow. <sighs> listen, Patokam. Listen. This is what Jesus was telling the woman. There is a well here. You need to come with vessels, fetch, then go drink. The water runs out you come back he said there is another well here you don't need to visit you need to abide you need to abide just connect your pipes to this pipe this one will never run dry and anytime this one is there it will provoke the waters to flow and the moment they flow something will also flow and it does not flow from a place of emptiness Whatever flows is from a place of abundance and my cup runneth over. We are not a blessing from a place of emptiness. This is your capacity. It must be full. But because you still abide, it is in the level of fullness that now you begin to overflow. Whether people like it or not, they will be blessed because of you. Abraham became a blessing even to Lot. Even when they disconnected, Lot knew, I am being blessed because the man is operating from an overflow. And by the time he was told to look for land, the Bible says he told Lot, look for land first. Because this level, we don't connect because of what he can give. We connect because of who he is. Lift up your hands out of my belly. Your family will test the waters you have tested. Where you enter, they will sense there is a flow. There is a flow. Shataya. Basoli baratosi akadaya. Palira compendila. Of my belly shall flow rivers. It is becoming a reality. Rivers of living. Rivers of healing. Rivers of revival. She left her boats. When back as an evangelist, the whole of Samaria had the gospel. Rivers are flowing. Shabela Kataya, Komenila Baraskopela, Esemenia Raporia, Seketele Bozadila. He's coming into my Samaria. Sekataya Balatosia, Meketele Bozi Kataya, Palomina Kompedila, Kalabo Shataya. Revival flow. Whatever you carry, 